It's okay to fail if I wrote this piece while waiting for my coffee. No edits whatsoever. I just want to speak straight from my heart. Also, I'm not trying to sell you inspirational mambo jumbo crap, just to be clear. I just have something I want to say about failing and the mentality of giving up. My video might sound like the cliche motivational videos you consumed during those days when it was raining else on you <laughs> every single day. But it is not my goal to make that kind of a video. I just feel like I know something about failure which I want to share and hopefully you will learn from. But before I begin, I am trying to grow my small channel. I make video essays and I stream my gameplay or building process in my hardcore world. So, may I ask humbly that you smash the subscribe button right now <laughs> and smash that like button too. <laughs> I am trying to reach 200 by the end of this year. <laughs> Just trying to be humble with my goals. Okay, with that out of the way, here's something about failure. Part 1. When kids give up. I just finished checking the exam papers of my students. I love checking the writing part of the exam because this is the part where students can really share who they are as a person and how they think or what they think about a certain topic that they are required to talk about. I also get to know them more deeper and this helps me evaluate their growth as a student under as their teachers or as kids to their parents. One of the questions in my exam has something to do with gadget addiction, time management, and earning failed scores. I thought this part of the exam would be easy as the question also came with pictures to make it easy for the students to evaluate the given situation and come up with ideas to try to explain the topic. Instead, a couple of students gave me a surprising and almost the same answer. This kid wrote something like this. Students already gave up on themselves, so they gave up on everything for the year. Basically, they tried saying that student failure comes not from gadget addiction and poor time management. Instead, failure came because the students gave up on themselves already. If this answer was given by one or two kids, I would have probably just ignored it. But five kids gave almost this identical answer. That warranted my curiosity, so I made a poll on my private Instagram account asking where these kids learned the idea because I know that did not come from me. All throughout the first half of the year, all I did was push the students, inspire the students, encourage them, and annoy them to the point I sounded like their parents. That reply bothered me so much because I didn't want to train students to have this defeatist mindset. To be fair, my exam is somewhat medium-hard level, favoring the easy side if my students studied their notes. Also, the class was composed of diverse levels of learners. The kids that gave that answer were the average performers. Finally, the student might just be trolling. That's a possibility too. However, checking their score and their final grade, I think they were serious when they wrote that on their paper. I already gave up, so I should just give up and accept failure. I asked myself, is this the reason why they seem to have already given up in the middle of our semester? Because the change in their performance is noticeable. Scores are somewhat dipping and sometimes I catch them just dozing off even during activity days. I wish I can talk to them personally. I want to tell them something. I want to try to convince them to not have this kind of mindset growing up because once it becomes a habit, they will carry this bad habit well into their adulthood. I want to talk to them. And tell them what? Well, for starters, I want to tell them, ah, shut it with your TikTok crap drama. Pick up yourself and go touch grass. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Part 2. I know why, I think. Of course, I will try to be as kind, open, and reasonable with them once I get to talk to my students. But I think I kind of know why they have this kind of mentality in this stage of their lives. First off, I think one reason why the kids have this I give up mentality is because we are now in the middle of the school year. The time when days feel too long. The time when faces have already become old and tiring to look at. The time when work and activities become more of a drag rather than fun. The time when school feels more like a prison more than a learning place. I understand and trust me, 
teachers feel all of this too. <laughs> so, what to do then to escape this feeling? I know one strategy. Go out with your friends. Go to the mall. Go see a movie. Go to the arcade and play games. Socialize and talk to people. This is one sure way to recharge your tired young soul. Make sure you play with your phone less and agree with your friends that your socializing time is socializing time and not social media time. If you are an introvert just like me, then do what recharges your soul. Play games, take long walks, work out, play sports, read a book, do something creative, whatever makes your soul happy. But make sure social media time is less. Which brings me to the second reason why I think my students felt giving up on their school life. They are way too much into social media. Again, I have nothing against social media, I use them too, but I do argue that too much time on it can ruin your ability to focus, to appreciate, to understand, to love, to care, to socialize, to feel authentic, to feel free, etc. Especially when your time in it is unbridled and poorly managed. I have already talked about my issue with social media in this video. So go watch this video. So, how did social media make my kids think like that? Well, two of the three students who gave me that defeatist answer are addicted to TikTok <laughs> and Instagram. <laughs> two of the worst social media platforms out there in terms of making teenagers feel bad about themselves. The illusory, perfect reality these platforms portray to the young minds look exciting, interesting, colorful, ideal, enticing. At a certain degree, it makes the student's reality nothing but gray and tediousness. So, as a result, instead of learning to appreciate the process of sitting down, trying to listen and do work, learning to accept the fact that it's a basic skill to be able to encourage themselves to fight through tough, long days and to not distract themselves with their gadgets, the result is that these kids learn to give up easily because they will fail anyway, they think. While the interesting social media, it won't fail these kids. It will keep feeding their addiction and fantasy. It will keep caressing their ego. It will keep managing their thinking and feeling. One can argue that teachers don't give enough activities and fun things to do. However, learning is not all the time dancing, singing, painting, or making collage. <laughs> teachers still have to give students the traditional way of assessment and teaching. Not all theories from subjects can be taught through singing. What I'm trying to say here is, those long boring lectures is part of the process. As teachers, we really do try our best to make it less boring as possible, but there's really few things we can do if the topic and lessons dictate that we must do a lecture first. As for me, I do divide my activities from paperwork, to group works, to creative works, but even then, some kids still find them boring. So, students. For this, my advice is just live through it. If you are able to survive this lecture time by the teacher, you will surely be able to survive university when everything is mostly theory and lectures. Also, I think it's dangerous to assume that fun equals learning. If this was the case, then the best dancer can just dance his or her application to be a surgeon through a fun, interpretative dance and should secure the surgeon work. Meanwhile, those that have boring application papers showing how much work they put in their life building towards a career, those guys should not get any jobs because they did the boring part of the work. <laughs> but don't get me wrong, as much as possible, I do try to make my lessons fun. Speaking of university, the third reason why I think those kids gave that answer, maybe, just maybe, is that maybe they feel trapped and stuck in this tiny place called school. Kids feel stuck inside the classroom and in the school. They can't really exactly pinpoint to this, but they feel it, that they are being limited. Right now, the kids are just stuck in a small fishbowl. But in my humble opinion, Within this small fishbowl, the students should start building themselves up, not only with their academics, but their social lives too. What I'm trying to say is, the school is the grounds for their testing and experiments. This small bowl is the place for them to learn to talk to others. 
the place for them to learn to find the courage to approach their teachers. This is the place for them to learn the basics in academics and social etiquette. The school might be boring now for them, and they just want to quit and be done with it. But once high school is over and they have not learned those basic skills they need when in university, most probably they will have a hard time in university, or if not, at least somewhat hard. So the advice here is make friends at school. Go with your crowd. Go with your tribe. Learn all those basic things you need. Don't just look at school as a place where your parents drop you off so you'd suffer daily. <laughs> Instead of feeling like giving up, go through the day and learn anything you can from there. And it doesn't have to be academic, mind you. Maybe at school you can learn how to talk to girls. Instead of being a weirdo creep online, trying to impress girls with your stolen memes. Part 3. Just Paranoid It's okay to fail as long as you understand why you failed and you know what needs to be done. I guess I'm just overreacting about my students. In the Instagram poll I made, I asked where the students got the idea of I give up on myself so I just give up on everything. Because I know I never told them that nor did I imply the idea in my class. The choices in that poll were a. I learned it from another subject. B. Just a coincidence. Many students feel that way. C. You just care too much, you become paranoid. <laughs> Funny enough, five kids answered letter C. You just care too much, you become paranoid. A and B both got two votes. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe the poll was not a great way to try to understand what's going on in the minds of those students. I should really talk to them. I should really talk to these kids and try to understand why they feel that way towards their lives as students. But, this simple poll actually helped me put things into perspective. Maybe I do care too much. To the point, I become paranoid of what happened to these kids and why they would write such defeatist idea on my exam. I got scared for nothing, for thinking way too much that maybe these kids were just actually tired because my exam was actually around 1pm, <laughs> a time when everyone feels tired and sleepy. I guess I'm just being paranoid, overreacting, I don't know, maybe. Part 4. I failed and nobody cared. I just find it very funny though. When I was a student and I experienced the same feeling, there was none that felt paranoid and overreacted the way I did towards my students. When I was performing poorly in classes as a student, no one bothered asking me why and what's up. All I remember from that chapter in my life was keep going to school, keep treading on even if you are already left way behind the subject, keep moving. Doesn't matter if you fail the next grading term because the school machine will keep moving on. The wheels of the school tank will keep turning even if you fall out the tank and get crushed by it. Those that can hold on tight on the tank will survive. Those that fell off will be left behind. And so, I failed. And failed. And failed some more. I graduated high school not really discovering my potential as a learner. All I remember were tons of embarrassing stories of reprimand and getting ignored because I failed. Nobody reacted for me the way I did for my students. Come university. And I almost had the same experience again. This time, however, I learned my lesson. I held tight on the university ship and made sure I won't fall off. I taught myself time management. I taught myself note-taking. I taught myself study techniques. I taught myself things I needed in university to survive that nobody taught me in high school while I was failing. I guess you already see the point I'm trying to make here. Those noisy students of mine are so lucky to have me because <laughs> I can share with them my experience. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, I love my work and that love extends to my customers, the students. So I guess for me, my experience is a very valuable tool or knowledge I can share to them now that they are almost in the same spot as I was when I was in high school, accepting failure and as the veteran in our humble group, I must teach them the wisdom of the old people. 
It's okay to fail, as long as you learn from it and do something about it. This is what I will tell my students. Part 5. Dear Students Do not give up easily on everything just because you failed on one or two things. Accept that not all are great and that some of us, including us, you and I, will fail one or two subjects and that is okay. But do not make constantly accepting failure a habit. Go through the suffering of failing this term, but do not give up the whole year as a failed year because each day is not the same. Experience the failure in your scores, but do not give up on your other classes because I'm pretty sure you're smart in one of them. My young friends, it is okay to fail, but you have to learn to hate it too. Don't make defeatism part of your young mentality. Do something about it. Take small steps to change. Accept small changes. Reach out. Work your way out of it. Because if you do, you will learn. You will grow. You will become more resilient. You will learn perseverance. I'm pretty sure of it. My young friends, if you believe me that we must go through failure, then you would have already made yourself the bravest person you know of. By that time, you would have already conquered failure, and you would have already learned how to deal with it. You will become more confident. You will become more diligent. And by the time you reach my age, and failure seems imminent, you will have the wisdom to deal with this and you won't crumble that easy. Instead, you will surely succeed where many have failed just by the mere sight of small failure. You, my friend, would succeed. And in the end, just like me right now, writing this essay, you too will become someone's example for learning how to overcome failure. And you must share your wisdom. Thanks for listening.